Hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. Weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, gonna hear my praises roar. Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is alive Hallelujah Everything inside of me I raise a hallelujah darkness free I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery I raise a hallelujah here you was your hold on me I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm Louder and louder Gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is alive
Welcome each and every one of you. We look forward to gathering today for our worship. We're looking forward more than anything else for the presence of the Lord as we have gathered. Would you please pray with me? Father, we thank you again for an opportunity to gather for worship. More than that, we are grateful for your love and your grace and your mercy. And as we worship, as we share in this time together, more than anything, we ask your presence, your blessing. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you please take a moment and just turn and welcome one another. Extend that hand of welcome. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We have several opportunities as we have gathered this morning. We thank the Lord for all of those things that we do in the life of the church. One of those things, one of those privileges I have as a pastor, as we share with a congregation, is when a family has a baby born to them. It is such a celebration to that family, but it's a celebration to the entire church. We are so thankful for that life. And in the church of God, as I have shared many times, we do not baptize infants or real small children who do not understand what they would be doing in being baptized. Being baptized is we accept the Lord into our life. We conscientiously make that decision to love him, serve him, invite him into our life, and then we are baptized. We, we go and, and we, in the baptismal pool, we go down under the water, the old life has died, and we come out of the water, the new life is alive in Christ. What a celebration. But when a baby is born, we share in a time of dedication. And um, I, I want to look at, at some scriptures. In, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 27, 28. For this boy I prayed, Hannah. For this boy I prayed, and the Lord has given me my petition which I asked of him. She prayed for that boy and she had that baby. So I have also dedicated him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he is dedicated to the Lord. And so that scripture, along with Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. And then in Psalm 127, verses 3 and, 3 and 4, Behold, children are a gift of God. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. And so as a family celebrates the birth of, of this new little life, uh, and as we as a church celebrate the, this life, we recognize that that child is a gift from the Lord, but we also recognize the challenge, the challenge to dedicate them to the Lord, the challenge to to raise them and to teach them the things of God that they one day would give their heart and life to Him. So at this time, Eli and Kalina uh, would like to come forward and as they have 
recently given birth to little Rhett, Rhett Walter Nye. Uh, they would like to uh, bring him forward to dedicate him. And what a privilege it is. Little Waylon and Chesney, they came with mommy and daddy and it's so special. What a beautiful family you all are. This is a special time. But in particular, we would like to dedicate Little Rhett. So, first of all, Eli and Kalina, do you here this day recognize Rhett as a gift from God and give heartfelt thanks for this blessing? If so, answer we do. Do you here this day dedicate him to the Lord who gave him? Do you here this day promise that as parents you will bring Rhett up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord? If so, answer we do. Do you here this day ask God's blessing upon his life to lead, to guide, to direct, to protect him through all of his years? If so, answer we do. It is vitally important that parents dedicate themselves as well as their child to the Lord. Eli and Kalina, do you, knowing that your lives are going to flow into Rhett's life and character, promise to love him, meet to the best of your ability his physical and emotional needs, and with the strength and guidance of the Holy Spirit, promise to teach him about Jesus Christ demonstrating God's love in the lives you live before him? If so, answer we do. And to all of us as their church family, do you promise to love this family, encourage them, pray for them, minister to them in their times of need, and demonstrate the love of Jesus Christ by living lives before them, as examples for them to follow? If so, answer, we do. We do. Amen. Well, at this time, I would appreciate the opportunity if he will allow it. We have this beautiful little guy, little Rhett Walter Nye, and we would like to pray a prayer of dedication to him and I'd like to ask if you would join with me here at the altar uh, if you're if you're able to Janiel if you can thank you and we want to we want to dedicate little Brett to the Lord would you all pray with me father as a church family we thank you for this little life how precious and we recognize Lord that not only is he a precious life but he's a gift from you this day with Eli with Kalina with their grandparents and extended family and to all the church family God we dedicate him to you we pray that you will help us to be examples to him and God we pray for that day that he would love you and turn his life to you and live his life for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. What a privilege. What a blessing. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And I have this for you. His certificate and also a little adventure Bible. For him to uh, learn to read the stories about Jesus and God and his love and may you wear it out. We love you. We love you, Waylon. We love you, Chesney. God bless. Thank you. What a privilege. At this time, we would appreciate the opportunity to worship the Lord and, and recognize Him in the giving of our tithes and offerings. And folks, as we do that, 
Let's do so not as a time to oh, give the money. Let's do it as a time that we recognize God's blessing. The strength he's given us to do what we do. The blessing he's given us along the way. And as we give our offering today, may we do so with cheerful hearts. Let's pray. Father, thank you for all of your blessing in our lives. Thank you for the, the privilege of serving you. And thank you for the, the incomes you've given us in a variety of ways. And now as we give in this offering, we ask your blessing upon it. We dedicate it to you. May, may all of this be used to glorify you and further your kingdom. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. For those of you who don't know, 15 years ago, actually today, or a little before that, when Doris and I came to candidate here, 
we went through a time of meeting with everybody and it was just a lot of love and sharing back and forth and we had a worship service together and I was praying the whole time Lord show us if this is how you're leading show us if this is where you would have us go and as Cliff played that song the Lord spoke and gave me the answer as that song was playing I knew we were coming here so that that just has a special touch on my heart I appreciate that at this time we have a special testimony and uh, John Hall uh, would like to uh, to come and just share a couple things on his heart my church family. I'm giving a testimony today about the good Lord and Jesus, our Savior. For those of you who know me, you know how many times that I have been spared my life through these things, motorcycle accidents, numerous cancer surgeries, and if it wasn't for the good Lord and the saving blood of Jesus Christ, I would not be here today. I would not be in as good a shape as I am today. And anything is possible if you choose to accept the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. Thank you. Hold on, hold on. John stopped by this week, his heart pounding and tears in his eyes, asked if there was any way he could give a testimony. And he said if there was any way, somehow, could he be baptized? And obviously because of the trach and all of the surgery and all that's been done, he cannot be immersed. So we talked about it and we prayed, wanted it to be in the pool, and the Lord laid on my heart. I, I would not sprinkle, but ask the Lord, how can we best do this? And so we're going to go into the baptismal pool, and I have a bowl of water, and I'm going to baptize him. What a privilege it is. So John...
saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. In a loud voice they were saying, worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Sing with us this chorus. Father, we love you, we worship and adore. that are, are in your bulletin. There are several there. We'd like to emphasize this morning Mary Kaufman, Cliff's mom. Uh, she's been in the hospital for several days, just really having a difficult time recovering from COVID symptoms, and she's had some other issues as well. As well as, I got a call this morning, we want to pray for Cliff. He is dealing with a severe uh, sinus infection. As he called this morning, I, I could hardly hear his voice. He is uh, just having a very difficult time with it. And so, as you know, he would be right here leading in worship. But uh, we want to remember him in prayer. And also, uh, Barry and Beth, Beth Freed, they are also um, sick and not doing well. And so we want to uh, lift them up in prayer um, as well. Paula Ferrante, uh, Kay Eddinger's daughter, uh, is dealing with COVID. And so um, we want to uh, remember uh, this need as well. And certainly there are a host of others. Each and every one of us, I think, could raise our hand. We have prayer requests. We have needs and all. I'd like to uh, sing that chorus that we sang again, um, Spirit, we love you, sing that part of it. 
And uh, I'm so thankful to have Pastor Fred and Robin Fry and their son Nate here this morning. What a blessing. And uh, Pastor Fred, would you mind coming to this microphone and leading the prayer after we sing the chorus? Would you do that? Let us stand together as we would sing. Spirit, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the Father, we pause in this moment, and Lord, we glorify. We glorify the name of Jesus Christ. God, as we have entered in this place this morning, we've seen a beautiful baby come for that dedication. We watched a man give testimony of how awesome his God is. And then to follow Jesus into the baptismal pool. And God, if we we closed right now and we said amen, we'll walk out of here, Lord, knowing that we have met with you. And for that, this morning, we say thank you. And Father, that is why we pause to glorify Thy name. The name above all names. The name that can, that can heal any disease. The name that can mend any relationship. The name that gives us purpose to rise out of our beds each and every morning. Lord Jesus, we love You this morning. We thank You. And Father, we just pray a blanket prayer over this congregation of people. Father, we in Jesus' name that you would touch and heal, that you would bring comfort and peace. Father, that you would bring a joy and a celebration of life to each person within the sound of my voice. And Father, for our dear brother this morning, as he has ministered and shared his heart with us for so many years, Father, we ask a special blessing upon him this morning. God, we thank you for the privilege that you've given us to be in your house this morning. And Lord, we glorify your name. We thank you for your audience. And God, we ask in Jesus' name that you would touch every person on that prayer list this morning. For our brother Cliff, Lord, we just continue to pray for for him and with him. Lord, we thank you for the to serve you In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, brother. You may be seated. Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? And who told the ocean 
You can only come this far And who showed the moon Where to hide till evening Whose words alone can catch a falling star This life within me cries I know my Redeemer lives The very same God That spins things in orbit Runs to the weary the worn and the weak and the same gentle hands that hold me when I'm broken they conquer death to bring me victory now I know my redeemer I don't think I've ever stood in front of a congregation and said these words. I don't want to preach this. <laughs> but I do, if you understand that. It's what the Lord has given, 
And so as pastor, I, I want to share these words with you. And uh, they're words for me as well. First of all, from Joshua, chapter 4, beginning with verse 18. And would you please stand in reverence to the Lord and his word. Joshua 4, beginning with verse 18. And it came about when the priests who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord had come up from the middle of the Jordan, and the soles of the priests' feet were lifted up to the dry ground, that the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and went over all its banks as before. Now the people came up from the Jordan on the tenth of the first month and camped at Gilgal on the eastern edge of Jericho. And, these, and those twelve stones which had taken from Jordan, Joshua set up at Gilgal. And he said to the sons of Israel, When your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What are these stones? Then you shall inform your children, saying, Israel, cross this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you had crossed, just as the Lord your God had done to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until we had crossed, that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, so that you may fear the Lord your God forever. And then over in Philippians, these words, chapter 3. Verse 13 and 14, very difficult. <laughs> Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. God did an amazing thing. He parted the Jordan River. The banks of the river stayed back while the Ark of the Covenant was brought across it. It was brought across. Can you imagine a river parting so that you could take something across that river and then when you get to the other side of the river, the river starts flowing together again. That's an amazing, powerful thing that God did. He did it as his word was being transferred along. God did this amazing, powerful thing. How awesome that must have been for those who experienced that. But it's interesting, the Lord tells them now, Put a few stones here. Put 12 stones here. And after you put 12 stones here in years down the road, when your children ask, what are these stones doing here? You can tell them about the power of God. You can let them know how God had provided for them, how God had done some powerful, miraculous things to see them through and give them victory in carrying the word of God across that river. And then there's Paul. He's talking about his history, the, the verses I read in Philippians. He talked about how he was a Hebrew of Hebrews and he kept all the law and he did all those things. But he says, I, I count all that as nothing compared to the, to the amazing power of knowing Jesus Christ as Lord. And he says, forgetting all that's behind, I press on. You know, we look at that, and I, I look at here. Here, God is having them put stones down to remember. And over here, Paul is saying, forget what lies behind, press on. And you know what? The word forget 
is very important and what it means. It's true to all of us here today. It is true for me. It is true for you folks here as, as a congregation of God's people. God would share those very words with you. And, and, and he, you know, as pastor, I would like to say, now listen, folks, I'll tell you what. It's been absolutely our amazing time together. And they're just, I don't care what happens in the future. It just could never get like it's been. There's no way. That's Phil talking. That's Phil. But you know what? The amazing truth is God would want us to forget in a healthy way. Because you see, think with me for a moment, the experiences that we have in life, we can hang on to in a positive or a negative way. How many of us have those areas of our life that we can't move on with friendships, we can't move on with certain people in the family, we can't move on maybe in a church, we can't be involved because of this horrible thing that happened way back here. Somebody said something, somebody did something, and it upset me, and I'll tell you what, I'm not going to any family gatherings again. I'm not going to talk to those neighbors again. I'm not going to that church. I'll tell you what, all that... It can have a negative effect on us. But also, in a different way, we can get stuck in the past. How many times are we not able to move forward? How, are, how many times are we not able to move ahead and see God do amazing things because we're stuck back here in the good old days? Do you remember back when? Oh, I remember. Do you remember, I'll tell you what, when we had, when we had piano and organ only, those were the days in the life of the church. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. They got, they got those guitars and drums in church now. I'll tell you what. I don't know what's going on in life. I'm not going there. We chuckle. But because of a lot of things in the good old days, the way it used to be, I liked it when we did it this way. I liked it when it was was done this way. I, I liked it when that pastor was there. I liked the way that pastor did it. Can you imagine that your next pastor might stand behind the pulpit, never move during the whole sermon, never move a muscle? <laughs> He's going to preach like this. He's got, his voice will never go up. It'll never go down. This is how the sermon is. This is how the Lord is. He loves you, and I hope you know how he loves you. He's going to bless you. He's going to do a lot of good things for you. Aren't you going to appreciate that? Isn't that amazing what God does? <laughs> I'll tell you what. We need a pastor who will get down with us, right? Here's the point, brothers and sisters. I want to invite you. I believe God would invite you and me. Let's put down some healthy stones. Good healthy stones. I pray that in the months ahead you'll talk back to when there was a baptism with a pan of water when Pastor Phil was here. I, I pray that someday, maybe as sick of it as you are, that you'll say, you know what, I sure miss singing. There's power in the blood. <laughs> I pray that when you come together that you'll remember maybe a, a, a sermon when, when God spoke to you through it. I pray that we can remember when, when we anointed someone at the altar and they weren't expected to live and here they are. I remember times when John Hall was not expected to, to live the night. I remember us praying. How many days were you in a coma? Two weeks in a coma, not expected to live. And here he is giving a testimony. A couple weeks ago, he was on a motorcycle riding with nine of us that went for a motorcycle ride. Wasn't expected to live. Let's remember that. Let's remember how God got Dale Brown through brain surgery after he fell off a ladder 
onto the hard cement. Let's never forget people that gave their heart and life to Christ as we minister together. Let's not forget a song service when your life was touched and God moved you and changed you and helped you and encouraged you. Let's not forget times when we've dedicated children. Let's not forget, you know, there's been just about 100 people baptized along the way. Let's remember that. Let's not forget that. I hope when we sit down for coffee, we can remember. Don't forget. But remember in a healthy way. Because you see, what God wants us to do is in a healthy way, have this, hold on to it, thank God for it, refer to it now and then. But in a healthy way, forget it and press on. Because you see, what pastor does God have in store for you? What plan through that pastor does God have in mind for you and you and all of you together? How blessed it would be for me to hear that, that Elwood City Church of God is doing this. I'd like to think I gave the pastor the idea. <laughs> <laughs> but folks... That's the healthy thing. Forget you? I can't forget you. We'll, we'll still have lunches now and then, whatever. We'll still talk. That, that's not going anywhere. But you see, God, God is doing kind of a separation of us as, as pastor of this church. And in that, he has an amazing days ahead. Because you see, the church, who we are, you want to know something, never forget this. I don't care where you are or what church you are or who you're listening to. It's not about me, it's not about you. It's about the Lord and us. You see, I would like to think, look at my church here. I would invite any pastor, come on, come on to my church. No. No. This is the Lord's church. I'm privileged to serve as pastor. Because I'll tell you what, if this is my church, we're in trouble. It's God's church. You know why I'm here? Because God called me. I know that, so does Doris. And God even used a trumpet among many other conversations. And so you know what? God would want you as a congregation to put some memorial stones around. Don't pretend I was never here. Maybe some of you might want to. Put some, remember, like I'm going to remember you. I'm going to remember how God has moved in blessed conversations and laughs and all of that. I'm going to remember some tears. I'm going to remember when we've prayed at hospital bedsides, funerals, weddings. What a privilege. But comma, and then God, what? God, right now, our prayer, you know what? Right now, God is stirring someone's heart. Maybe they're not even sure, but God is stirring someone to leave a church and to go somewhere else. And we're praying that God will show that person it's Tellwood City. And if the person God calls to come to Elwood City comes here, I'll tell you what, there's some amazing things in store. Because it's God's church, God's person leading that people. The gates of hell can't prevail against that. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And so I'll tell you what, in the days ahead, there's, there, there's going to be more worship services when the music, you'll be in tears. There's going to be times when you hear a sermon and God is going to bring tears to your eyes because that's going to touch you and God will challenge you and he'll lead you. He'll correct you. He might even spank you a couple times like he has done me. But it's to correct you in his love. There's going to be more fellowship dinners. There's going to be more classes. 
there's going to be more prayer times. There's going to be more counseling sessions. God knows that. And God's preparing that. And you know what? We're going to, we're going to trust him. Nobody can take away. I don't, I, it doesn't matter who comes. Nobody can take away the love that I have for you all. I can't put it into words. I don't think there's any more tears left. I laid in my bed last night. It was, I, I mean, there's a peace. But that doesn't make it easy. I love you all. And so it's been a privilege every step of the way. And I thank you. I thank you. Because, you know, as, as pastor, if anything has happened over the years, I thank the Lord for the privilege of being pastor. But you know what? It's with a lot of people by my side. You see all those people playing up here in committees? There were those who several years back decided we need to put some air conditioning in here. There are those who serve in a variety of ways and it just, they have walked with, by my side and God has blessed when I came comfortable chairs. <laughs> How the Lord has blessed. But you know what? We sat down and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and God gave us a plan about renewing some things, about adding on a, that building right there and to updating things. What a blessing. But as Paul said, the time of my departure has come. I don't have to necessarily like that. But I have that peace. I know that the Lord is, is finished with us with what he had for us to do here. You know, folks have asked, well, what are you going to do now? The Lord will show me. I don't know. It's not like, well, I'm retiring the last of June, and then I'm going to, I don't know what the, and then I'm going to is. But Doris and I are trusting the Lord for whatever that is. I doubt I'll spend too much time in a chair. I, I just can't do that. So, in closing, honey, would you please come up here for a moment? So here we are. We love you. We thank the Lord first of all. But thank you for your trust and your confidence and for the privilege of having served you from the bottom of our hearts. And I, I know Doris would have to sing this because she doesn't <laughs> like to preach except to me at home. But we thank you. It's been nothing less than a privilege to serve as your pastor. May God bless you.
Just for everything, and we ask your presence for each of us as we go our separate ways this day, but as we come back, as these folks come back, God, bless them, guide them, direct them. Lord, we're trusting that you have some amazing things in store and may that all unfold. Bless the leaders, bless every person. Have your magnificent, marvelous, wonderful way. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. God bless. You are dismissed. you guys thank you so much thank you I love you all so much let's have a big hug all of us together oh. thank you oh I love you thank you so much that's the most special thing you could have done thank you <laughs> love you thank you God bless. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all so very, very much. Thank you.